Pro Group Management. Workers Comp that works for you. This is 7 at 7 from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Good morning, everyone. I'm Renee Summerauer. We start off with your top stories brought to you by Nevada Hands Silver Sky Assisted Living Community. Learn more at NevadaHand.org. For more than four decades, the rape and murder of Sandra Renee DeFelice in her Las Vegas home remained unsolved. But police say 64-year-old Paul Newtall was taken into custody last week in connection to the 1980 slaying. DeFelice's daughter, who was three at the time of the murder, called cold case detectives last year to ask for an update in the investigation. It was then that detectives realized that evidence found under the victim's fingernails should be tested for DNA, which led to Newtall. The 25-year-old waitress had been beaten, stabbed, raped, and strangled. Newtah is being held without bail and is facing charges of murder, sexual assault, and burglary while in possession of a firearm. I am hopeful that in some way, shape, or form this provides some sort of closure for the family and ultimately results in some type of closure uh, and justice for Sandra. The Guatemalan citizen accused of stabbing eight people on the Las Vegas Strip has been ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation to determine if he's competent to face charges. Review Journal's James Schaefer has more. A Las Vegas judge ordered a mental health evaluation on Monday for a man accused of stabbing eight people, two of them fatally on the Strip. 32-year-old Yanni Barrios has been charged with two counts of murder and six counts of attempted murder in connection with the unprovoked attack on October 6th outside the Wynn, Las Vegas. During a Monday court hearing, Barrios's case was transferred to district court so that he can be evaluated by a state psychiatrist, who will determine if he is competent to face the charges. For the Las Vegas Review-Journal, I'm James Schiever. Governor Steve Sisolak skipped the Nevada Day Parade in Carson City on Saturday. According to a spokesperson with the governor's office, he did not attend due to security concerns, but declined to comment further on the incident. Carson City Sheriff Ken Furlong said there was never plans for Sisolak to be at the parade in the first place, but the governor's presence at this event has been a longstanding tradition. But he did appear at another Nevada Day event later that afternoon and participated in the annual tradition of handing out candy to trick-or-treaters at the governor's mansion on Monday. The Oakland Athletics' chances of relocating to Las Vegas are increasing, according to MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred. The A's lease at Ring Central Coliseum at the Bay Area expires at the end of 2024. If the team leaves Oakland, it would occur within five years. If the A's move, they are considering the Tropicana Hotel site or the Las Vegas Festival grounds for the construction of a 35,000-seat stadium. A relocation would require some form of public funding from Nevada officials. To do so, just like the Raiders, they're going to have to offer some sort of public funds, but there's going to have to be some kind of uh, public assistance available to help them build a proposed $1 billion dome uh, ballpark. In your business news, sponsored by Bank of Nevada Bank on Accountability, there are increasingly fewer places left in the country that only accept cash as payment, and many of them can be found on the Strip. While other industries move forward with cashless options like mobile wallets, prepaid, debit or credit cards, but more manufacturers and industry members are getting involved in the shift, visit LVRJ.com for more details. And the slot machines at Harry Reid International Airport have hit a new landmark, generating more than $1 billion in revenue over 36 years. The company operates 1,430 slot machines, which have generated an average $39.8 million in gross revenue per year. Now it's time for your weather report, brought to you by Star Nursery, your garden's partner for every blooming thing. Mostly sunny skies with breezy conditions is forecasted for your Tuesday. Today's highs will reach about 80 degrees with wind gusts as high as 32 miles per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with temps around 53 degrees. For the rest of the week, those windy conditions will cool us down to the upper 60s on Wednesday with a 20% chance of rain that evening. It could get even cooler on Thursday. Evening lows also cooling down to the mid to upper 40s. Vegas Nation brought to you by Station Casino's STN Sports. Download the app today. There were some reports uh, out there, depending on you know who you read and all that, uh, that Mark Davis might not have been happy with Josh McDaniels, uh, the Raiders head coach, or uh, may have had some second thoughts uh, about hiring uh, Josh McDaniels. Uh, it's nonsense. Uh, I got a chance to uh, to talk with 
uh, Mark Davis uh, on Monday, uh, and he basically said Josh McDaniels is going to be the head coach here for many years to come. But the last thing they're going to do is just panic and pull the plug after seven games. That is kind of the opposite of what they're actually trying to build here. In your health news, sponsored by Boulder City Hospital, we're here for you when you need us. Breast cancer treatments have improved over the years, but much research still needs to be done. That's why Dr. Saranya Shumsuri, an oncologist at the Mayo Clinic, recommends breast cancer patients participate in clinical trials, which researches innovative therapies. She also says a lack of diversity in clinical trials could result in a lack of data for different groups of people, so it is important for all communities to participate. Sports brought to you by DNR House of Diamonds, making luxury affordable, located in downtown Summerlin. The Knights will look to keep the hot start to the season going against the Washington Capitals at 4 p.m. today. It's an afternoon start for the Knights as they kick off a five game road trip that's going to test all the metal they put into this eight and two start to the season that has them with the second best record in the NHL. A big reason for the good start, Jack Eichel. He has 10 points in 10 games. His a full display of his skills was shown when he scored that overtime winner against the Winnipeg Jets on Sunday. For more on Eichel, check out ReviewJournal.com. Sports betting brought to you by Las Vegas Paiute Tribal Smoke and Cigar Shop. In a matchup of two win teams, the Raiders are one-point favorites at William Hill Sportsbook over the Jacksonville Jaguars. The total is 47. At 2-5 and five and in last place in the AFC West, the Raiders are 33-1 to one long shots to win the division. In your entertainment news, sponsored by Best Mattress, Best Service, Best Selection, Best Price Guaranteed. For a decade, the Neon Museum has brought Las Vegas' historic casino signs back to life. Now, John Katzlamidis tells us what's in store for the museum's future. The Neon Museum celebrated its 10th anniversary on Friday night at the Jungle Palace, the former home of Siegfried and Roy. Barbara Molaski was awarded the organization's Glow Award for her long support of the organization. We heard from Elaine Wynn and Lynette Chappelle, who was the evil queen in Siegfried and Roy's show. We also learned that the original Lido de Paris sign and the Palm signs are going to be preserved and displayed at the Neon Museum and big endowments coming from Yesco Sign and also the Molaski Acquisition Fund to help shore up the museum for many years to come. Thank you for watching 7 at 7 a.m. I'm Renee Summerhour. If you have an Amazon Fire TV, search Review Journal to download our channel. Watch Las Vegas breaking news streaming live on your OTT device. We'll see you back here later today for 7 at 7 p.m. From the Las Vegas Review Journal, have a great day. Review Journal Studio, sponsored by Adam Kuttner. Get the maximum settlement as quickly as possible. This 7 at 7 update, sponsored by Pro Group Management. You're watching 7 at 7 from the Las Vegas Review Journal.